to me Absorb my life Let me illuminate you Close your eyes Can you hear my voice? Hello beautiful beings, this is Maruma Tu and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology and this is the daily astrological forecast for January 3rd, 2017. Yes, so hopefully you had an amazing day yesterday and hopefully today is going to be equally amazing because we have a couple of fun things going on. You know me, I love degrees. I love critical degrees and we have two planets at the zero degree critical mark happening now, okay? So Mercury retrograde in Capricorn is hitting zero degrees and Pisces or Venus has just entered Pisces at zero degrees. So we are now in Venus and Pisces. Um, I, I am, I'm excited about this to tell you the truth, but I am going to read something a little bit different today. It's not the Sabian symbol. Um, it's something different called inside the degrees, okay? And so this is really getting into some more intricate messages. And I want to read the degree for zero degrees of Capricorn, which is Mercury retrograde. And it's pretty prophetic because everything that I keep saying about my interpretation of this particular Mercury retrograde in the sign of Capricorn, still beast mode on, not giving two fucks about the retrograde, I think is really key and about how Mercury has been in a meditative state. So this degree, it means standing on the inside of life, protected and guarded, guided and led, held fast, kept so far back inside that what does express itself is purely a ceremonial display, a formal declaration. The observer or witness empowered to prevail, prevail able to see, to realize, to comprehend the mysteries, clairvoyance, Keenly sensing and viewing meaning and value, purpose and spirit, backbone. So very strongly and steadily directed from within that there is no outer, there is no thing to do. Instead, you center yourself and align with who you truly are and dedicatedly remain in the place of authority and power and inward truth as your statement and the only thing you know, okay? I don't know if that excites you guys as much as it does me, but it really freaking does, okay? So Mercury retrograde, zero degrees, a Capricorn two-day critical degree, and that is its message. So let us move forward with that, okay? Because the way that we accomplish things in life, you know, Capricorn, the sun has made it to 13 degrees today. And so we're moving forward, right? So we have to look inward. We have to make sure that we are aligned inside with what we're trying to manifest on the outside. So Mercury retrograde again in Capricorn is just saying this, and this is the degree that actually marks that true essence, okay? And it's bridging worlds. It's right in between Sagittarius. It's gonna step backwards in the Sagittarius and still be mindful that is not literally going backwards, okay? So do not think that Mercury is literally going backwards because it's not. It's always moving forward, okay? So with that being said, we're about to move into Sagittarius in a perfectly meditative state because Mercury needs to understand something more about Sagittarius energy and about the galactic center. Okay, because if you remember, Mercury's going to move back to 28 degrees, which is just touching that 27, 26 degree of Sagittarius galactic center. Okay, so this is the mindset that Mercury is presently in, which is representing the mindset of the collective conscious. You know, on this deeper level, behind everyone's veil, you know, the prevailable is what it said in that degree, okay? So prevail, okay? A bull, you know, are we available to pierce behind the veil? Are we? I hope so, because we're about to get a good glimpse and it's gonna be a galactic center glimpse. 
So me personally, I'm pretty stoked about it. I hope you are too. Now, Venus is uh, just left Aquarius, you know? It went from that critical 29 degree into Pisces at zero degrees. Um, it's having some harmonious conversations with Jupiter and Libra. So today might just be such a beautiful day for relationships, you know? Especially, you know, you wanna know your natal chart, okay? You wanna know where the planets fall in your natal chart because it's really important to know what house is Libra ruling in your chart. And again, I mean, they're all important, but especially with this Libra energy, um, Jupiter transiting and asking us to pay attention to our relationships. You know, what house is Pisces ruling in your natal chart? Because if these are falling into actual relationship houses, you know, fifth, seventh, eighth house, then that this is really, really big, big step for you and your closest relationships, love, boyfriend, girlfriendness, or marriage. Um, husband wife partnerships okay so this is good good information to know okay so again you know there's a lot of action in Capricorn today you know today okay Mercury Sun Pluto Mercury zero degrees Sun 13 degrees and Pluto at 17 degrees and then um, you know so think about it Earth right and then Pisces okay we have Venus south node neptune mars we still have the moon and we have chiron that's six planets okay we have a stellium <laughs> we have a serious stellium happening in pisces pisces is a water sign okay it's a mutable water sign which means that it's able to change and flow and it represents the 12th house okay so yes it can be absolute fantasy and I love that, you know, I'm highly 12th house ruled in both my walk-in chart and my original chart. So I flow with this vibration very easy. I do understand that not everybody is wired this way, you know, especially if you have more of, um, you know, um, a, mo if you have more like first, second, third house energies, it might be a little bit harder for you to understand. You know, Cancers get this really well. Scorpio gets this really well. Sagittarius, you know, Aquarius, a lot of Geminis. Um, Libra could be on the fence with that one. So, you know, and Leo, Leo gets it too because Leo uses its intuition to find the power of love and maintain that power. Okay, so... Um, just be mindful depending on where your planets are in your natal chart, okay? Because if you have Pisces in the first house or second house, this might be a confusing time, you know? And um, uh, Magic Mike, okay, he describes stelliums in a really great way that really made it click for me personally. And he explained it that, you know, each of the planets is a homie sitting on the couch next to each other, okay? Like you invite all these friends over, they come over, and now they're all sitting on the same couch together. And now, you know, they're so tightly packed. They can't really like look over at each other and talk. They just kind of have to sense each other's vibration. And some of them, you know, are gonna be more powerful than others. So, you know, Venus and Mars are a personal planet, you know? The moon is personal. And then we also have our, our south node, you know, and Chiron, Chiron, our wound. And then we have Neptune, a very outer planet, but it's at home. It's at home in Pisces, okay? So this Neptunian illusion delusion, you know, could actually be the one on the couch telling all these fantastic fantastic stories of just like this grandeur you know and so venus is like oh my god i just got here because it's at zero degrees right and so it, it's the last one to sit on the couch and it's like omg this is like the craziest story i've ever heard this like new vision of love is just so powerful and guess what i was just in aquarius i was just having this uranus energy downloaded i totally just you know, dose the consciousness with this quantum idea of relationships. And now I'm here and I'm dreaming this new fantasy of love and how this quantum relationship can actually look. 
Because guess where I'm going when I reincarnate? I'm going into Aries and I'm going to be in 3D. Okay, so that's what that is all about. Okay, so, you know, Mars, I personally have Mars in the 12th house in Pisces in my walk-in chart. So I actually have a very um, fruitful vision of this placement. You know, if people look at it in that, you know, it's our passion to move forward, our drive to move forward. You know, it's all in these analogies and what we use to describe them that can create these visions and our beliefs and our perspectives about them. You know, so now we have this passion and this drive to get to know ourselves more on a spiritual level. You know, like literally forget that Mars, you know, has that fire element from ruling Aries because it also co-rules Scorpio, which is another water energy. And if Mars already co-rules a water sign, then I'm pretty sure this engine this motor of mars is not going to get muddled by the water because we also have things called boats yeah and their their motors they're in water and they zoom right ahead through the water right so just saying maybe this is now the motor in the submarine okay mars is now the motor for the submarine and it's twenty thousand leagues under the sea and it's fucking moving forward okay it's not worried it comes from a water sign. That's all I have to say because I'm about to go on a tangent on that one and I can sense it going there, okay? So do not worry about Mars being in Pisces. Mars in Pisces is exactly what we need to get our shit together and realize that we are more than this physical, that we have so much more to offer, you know? And Venus is there too. It's our love and our passions getting rebirthed in the spirit so that whenever they come back they've learned the lessons of higher consciousness yeah you know and the moon is still there and actually this has been a really good moon in pisces and again i also have moon in pisces in the 12th house um in my walk-in chart it's at 27 degrees so it's you know touching chiron and so for me whenever the transiting moon moon moves into pisces it's usually um touchy you know, it's a little bit more of a sensitive energy for me personally. But um, yesterday and today has been absolutely fantastic. Can't complain. I can never actually complain because I'm always in a pretty amazing state of self-balancing. But um, that's whenever I actually get, you know, the feels. If I get the feels, it's usually moon in Pisces or moon in Cancer. Um, so long story short. Okay, um, throughout the day, the moon is going to conjunct Chiron. Okay, so again, Chiron represents our wound, our wounded healer, healer, heal thyself, you know, and yes, this is the point healer, heal thyself. So, this has a lot to do with, you know, star seeds and light workers and Reiki masters and energy healers, you know, because we are the ones that can give so much to the collective, so much to our clients that we forget to then heal thyself, you know? So we actually have to be in this conscious awareness that we are just as vital in our healing modalities as the clients that receive them that we need to give to ourselves so this is where i'm always reminding you to speak to your cells on a cellular basis you know command your cells your body your muscles your connective tissue your um tendons you know everything that connects the whole body your neurological connections and circuits your spinal cord um everything you know you can talk to everything your metabolism your digestion your heart rhythms um everything there's nothing that's excluded from this okay so you can actually speak to your internal being and command a result you know you can regulate your system through this knowledge so healer heal thyself is reminding us to go inside. Pisces is inside. Pisces is a spirit world. We are a soul, a spirit, energy, vibration, signature, experiencing through this vehicle of flesh, okay? It's not the other way around, 
Okay, so we can get disillusioned, you know, that Neptunian vibe. We can get delusioned and illusioned by what we see in this 3D. And we have to break free of our own mind paradigms. We have to realize that this is, this is just an illusion. And what's real is actually that Piscean energy. You know, so creating clarity will actually heal us. Okay, so that's the stellium that's happening in Pisces. We still have um, Uranus that just recently went direct. We have it in Aries, and it is going to continue to move forward. And trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. These lightning changes, these absolute Uranian, like, kaboom change is going to happen. And Uranus also rules, like, the age of Aquarius, okay? So... For all of us as a collective, the age of Aquarius represents this new and fresh outlook, okay? And that change has to happen in a moment, you know? Um, I was having a conversation earlier with someone about the millennial generation and how millennials can be very impatient. They want to see things happen now, that they don't want to make necessarily like a plan, right? You know, this A, B, C, D, E, F, G type of plan to make something occur. They just want to have the idea and then boom, there's the results. Voila, everybody's happy. Um, and that, you know, because they don't, ha they don't see that occur, they can get discouraged and then they seem flighty. Okay, well, yes, but uh, my particular perception of that uh, is that yes we want it now okay we want it now we want more jupiter and libra okay but here's the thing saturn is being reformed in sagittarius right yes yeah, so it's moving forward it's at 21 degrees now but it is going to go all the way to the galactic center and before it exits the galactic center it's going to retrograde remember and then it's also going to come forward again and cross the galactic center again and Remember, Saturn transits only happen every 28 years, okay? So Saturn is really taking its time. It's not rushing through this process. And then again, you know, Saturn represents patience. It's the other side. But Sagittarius is that higher knowledge, that higher wisdom. This collective energy that we're all moving towards as far as the Uranian Aquarian age of transformation that these millennials are going to usher in. Whether the old school paradigms like it or not. And so that is why Pluto is in Capricorn. Destroying old structures. Okay? Destroying those limitations. Those rules. Those regulations. Those boundaries. Those borders. Because yes, whenever a millennial gets into the real world. You know, the job market and all of that. And they're facing these old Capricorn Saturnian representations of past generations and then they come into this clash you know this clash of the way that they see the world millennials don't see the world in the same way that past generations did we the millennials see it as an outdated old school program that is need of change okay so this is what aquarius is doing this is what uranus is doing and this is what saturn is learning the lesson of saturn is being taught that this isn't staying the same. Excuse me. I have to um, fix my necklace. It's about to fall off. Oh well. Who cares? We're just going to put this over there. Because it doesn't want to stay on. So. I digress. But. This is what's going on. Right? And we're just about to have um, a lunar eclipse. Okay? And, or um, Yeah, solar eclipse. I'm sorry. It's a solar eclipse that we're just about to have. And that's going to be in the sign of Aquarius, okay? So that's going to be kind of a big deal in a really amazing way, okay? A solar eclipse in Aquarius whenever finally the sun moves into Aquarius. And I, like I said, I will make a video on that. But it's going to have a lot to do with the future moving of the nodes, okay? Because the north and south node are presently on the Virgo Pisces axis. And they are moving into the Leo Aquarius axis, okay? So the south node will be in Aquarius, the north node will be in Leo, and we will be understanding this whole different paradigm of how we connect this quantum realm to love, okay? And how that pushes us forward. So we'll get there whenever we get there. I'm not going to go into it right now, but this is how this is all playing out, okay? So 
get used to this quantum change. You know, you can only fight the past so much. You know, we can't go backwards and we're not going to go backwards. Everything in the chart, everything inside of us, we all want something new. We all want change and we want more change, okay? So, I mean, honestly, I think this is such an exciting time. Such an exciting time. I think that, you know, if you made it through yesterday, peachy keen, then today will be also even more abundant, you know, because we are just having this evolutionary energy blowing through all of our lives, you know? And so like I was saying yesterday, don't resist change. You know, don't hold on to your ego. Don't protect your your pride. Just let it all flow. Let it all be. Let it all create this imagination. Let your imagination cultivate some new passion, some new drive, some new desires, some new Mars energy. You know, because soon Mars and Venus are going to be in Aries. Okay, so let us not forget that we are all experiencing this, you know, planetary, energetic, soul vibe. You know, it's like I said, you know, planets are energies and they're just like us. So how many planets just ascended into Pisces, back into the spirit realm? How many of them are learning the lessons of their lifetimes? Let's think about it like that. Let's think about all these planets just w moved into spirit and they're all going through their spiritual birth right now, okay? So that they can learn the lessons of when they were in the other dimensions and then they could be rebirthed right along with the new lives that are coming in, okay? So, oh boy, I mean, imagine, imagine the, light, the, the little life forms that are gonna come in as little human beings uh, whenever we hit the Aries, the sun in Aries. It's going to be pretty profound because they've all been there getting a rewrite and a reboot because all these planets, Venus, Neptune, South Node, Mars, Moon, Chiron, they're in Pisces. Along with all of the spirit beings that are there too, getting ready to reincarnate. And I think that is fucking awesome. But that's just me. So um, this concludes the daily for today. But please take a look up below and see if there's anything that I can do as far as planetary translations for you. Um, everything is there. You don't need to look any further than right below. And I do have a uh, 10 minute for $10 sun, moon, rising, and house place placements. Um, I'm going to switch it up for a little while and do the inside degrees instead of the Sabian symbols. And I will flip back and forth between those two. Um, today was a little taste so that you get to see what that's all about. And yeah, let's move forward. Let's do this. So hit me up and I will see you tomorrow. Job bless. Let me absorb my life. Let me illuminate you. Close your eyes.